Breaking news. Breaking news. That's right. In the words of uh, the wordsmith, for those who know what I'm talking about, Nas, in his song, Made You Look, they shoot, shoot, shooting. Oh, made you look. You a slave to a page in my rhyme book. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, why you was shy. It's your brother, Amath, I acquire first name, IQ, it's all the same. Impromptu, DSTM, don't shoot the messenger. Impromptu, only because it's breaking news. Hey, man, look, the Rebloodnikins and the Demo Crips are shooting at each other right now, man. Shots getting let off. Warning shots fired overnight. The Harris, Arizona campaign office gets shot up we know the rebloodlikens the head of the snake agent orange he's been ducking bullets since july uh all hell's breaking loose man if we we looking for a civil war we're looking for something to really kick off we're seeing various little incidences whether this was inside plan is this stage i don't know all i know is uh, what the scriptures say and the scriptures tell us that if a kingdom be divided against itself it cannot stand um so yeah let's get right to it man i'm not gonna be too long i just want to share a couple of uh stories with you not only that i'm definitely not gonna leave you with one story man but uh i want to pull out another article that i ran across that uh shows and signifies the effects of systematic racism as much as our oppressors and our you know and our own people are apologizing and are caught up with stockholm syndrome and saying that there's not there is no racism there's nothing going on here all you got to do is believe work hard you got a chance to make it no 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 i've got an article written by our oppressors that explain and show the troubling link between slavery and the congressional um seats in congress the congressional wealth that is going to be uncovered and has been uncovered that all the uh, all of the congressional seats are funded by and have been funded by slavery right also want to look at this interview uh we've talked about what's been going on in venezuela and the um the coup attempt that was happening down there last weekend, I shared the story about uh, five people getting arrested, three Americans, two Spaniards uh, with espionage and, and looking to, you know, uh, incite a civil war going on in there. And they got caught with a, a, a cache of weapons. Um, we've been talking about that going on out there, man. America doesn't want Maduro in there. They're trying to get rid of him. Uh, but they seized his plane. And they're going to hold it under what's known as civil asset forfeiture. So I want to touch on that. I made mention of it a couple of weeks ago, but I want to look at that. But there's a weird interview that went on with the head of the FBI. I think he's the head of the FBI. I'll be, I'll be corrected when we play the video, if need be. But the interview that he made in regards to the seizing of the plane and all this other stuff. And just watch where, watch where I go with this when we look at this particular interview. Also, I got one last little bonus thing doubling back regarding the mark of the creature, the beast, right? And um, Revelation 13 and the advancements of technology and how we can see another step in the beast system being pushed forward right in front of our eyes. All right. Uh, let's start it off. Let's start it off. I want to open up uh, real quick. Let me, let me, do it like that. We're just going to read straight from the article. All right, here we go. Harris campaign office damaged by gunfire in Arizona. That's right. The Rebloodlikens did a little drive-by, man. They, they went and popped some shots at the Democrats. You know, they're out here banging in these streets. They're worried about the niggas out here in the, in the streets shooting each other. No, no, they already got high-profile white-collar banging going on in various political offices, in the White House, the Trap House. Yeah, the trap out. You you don't don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Coke being found in there, weed being found in there, roaches, rats. I mean, what's the difference in the trap houses? You know, that's in South Central LA or or down south in Bankhead 
or in uh you know memphis <laughs> you understand what i'm saying they got the same things going on out there man dope fiends walking around out there and if you go to dc i mean the hood is in walking distance you understand what i'm saying so that right now is the home of the uh the demo crips the Republicans is trying to take over the trap house and they warrant for it right now. Here you go. Harris campaign office damaged by gunfire in Arizona. No one was present or injured at the office or state Democratic Party. Spokesperson said Tempe, Arizona police said that they are investigating it as a property crime. Isn't that nice? So uh, are, are they doing this? Is this staged by the Harris campaign? Because right now it's not really on heavily uh breaking news sites i haven't seen it you know uh, cnn nbc all the, they're not going breaking news talking about it as if it's a real threat are they doing this to get sympathetic votes because of all the attempts on trump who knows they may be saying look they're, they were catching strays too from the maga hats the maggots don't feel bad for him look they're shooting back at us who, who knows conveniently nobody's there nobody's hurt you know and it's just a property crime okay police are investigating what appears to be gunfire damage overnight at a democratic party coordinated campaign office for kamala harris the incident occurred just a few days before harris is scheduled to visit arizona as she campaigns for president how convenient right before she gets here oh they just sprayed it up you know we can confirm that on 9 24 what appears to be damage from gunfire at a DNC campaign office was discovered, said the Tempe Police Department in a statement to NBC News on Tuesday. The office is shared by staff for the Arizona Democratic Party or the Democrat Party, the Harris campaign and Senate and House campaigns to boost turnout for the party in November. Look at this. Overnight, shot, several shots were fired into our Tempe Democratic Party coordinated campaign office. McCurney said, uh, no one was present or injured at the office. So there you have it. Uh, and, and like I may mention before, what does this signify for us, man? I mean, you know, the classic from Yahweh Shai's mouth himself. Uh, Mark three and uh, let's look at verse 23 and 24 and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan and if a kingdom be divided against itself it cannot stand if a house be divided against itself it cannot stand it's the same they fighting for the same house the same white house the same house of, uh house of um representatives they're fighting for the same house that houses the slaves Black, Hispanics, Native, Native Americans, right here, the children of Israel, fighting over who's going to maintain, who's going to have control over it, is divided right now. And it's always that way. But some of it is much of an illusion because they're all fighting for the same umbrella. You know, the so-called white man is so power driven. He doesn't care if he's got to make an enemy of his own, of, of his own people. Uh, they want power. Look at how Rome went down. From Julius Caesar and Nero and, you know, uh, uh, Brutus and all of that. And, you know, the backstabbing, the poisonings. That goes all the way back even into, um, you know, the, the Greeks. They'll sabotage, poison, kill each other for power. So let's not be mistaken when we see a Republican or a Democrat going at it. It's two birds of the same winged eagle okay let's not get it twisted uh so no no tears should be shed no extra security should be called you know for for the for for uh hyena harris because who knows what's going on man they, they could have did this for some sympathy uh as of right now i have yet to see any pictures online of the building being shot or anything i looked you know as you can see in the, in the, in the article itself, you, we don't see. No pictures available. Uh, you know, but there you go. That, that's breaking news as we speak right now. Okay. Um, let's move on. 
Now, talking about generational slavery, I mean, uh, ge uh, well, yeah, I mean, not necessarily generational slavery, but I want to talk about systematic racism and the effects that this country has been built upon the blood, sweat, and tears of Blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, and how our oppressors have profiteered off of it. Troubling link between slavery and congressional wealth uncovered in a new study. In an eye-opening study that bridges America's complicated history with its present-day power structures, hello, present-day power structures, for those who say that there's no such thing as white privilege or systematic racism from our own people all the way up the ladder to our oppressors still saying, I didn't do it. I wasn't there. I mean, I'm just fortunate. I worked hard. I struggled. You know, you, you, you hear from a uh, 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 hyena Harris. I come from a middle-class family. My mother worked hard. What? What? We've heard that line before. So let's look at this. In an eye-opening study that bridges America's complicated history with its present-day power structures, research researchers have uncovered a startling connection between slaveholder ancestry, something that Koala Harris, come on now Harris, has a connection with through her great-grandfather, or her grandfather, I should say, in Jamaica, slaveholder ancestry and the current wealth of the United of the U.S. Congress members. This revelation not only sheds light on the long-reaching ties of slavery's economic impact, but also raises profound questions about the persistence of privilege and the nature of generational wealth in America. Imagine that. Okay, so are we to say... uh Slavery, oh, that was in the past. That was over 400 years ago. Black folks need to stop complaining, stop whining, get up off your ass. You should be out there working and hustling. Go to school like I did. Uh, my parents were immigrants from Italy and Spain and from Ukraine and from Russia, and we got it out the mud. No, you didn't. Our parents came over here from Korea and work hard in the, in the sweatshops and look what we made of ourselves. We, we can't even accept that because you know what? I know for sure in California, LA in particular, there's a Korea town where they network and they build up their own community. Chinatown. There's a Chinatown damn near in there, every, every place you go, you know? I'm going to just speak on California. I don't even want to generalize. There's a little India. There's a Koreatown. There's Chinatown. There's a, a, a little Armenia up in, in the Glendale area and all of that. You dig what I'm saying? Beverly Hills. All the nations, they get their own. Over in the Fairfax district, there's a little Ethiopia well, where where is Black Town at? Where where where's little little a little Hispanic town? We get the hood. Watts, South Central, Compton, Hawthorne, Inglewood, East LA, Boyle Heights. You understand what I'm saying? You get the slums out there in um Morongo. Oh, you said well, that's where the casinos at. Have you have you seen what's outside of those casinos? Have you seen the, the little shanty town shacks the people's living in out there in 115 degree weather? Not to downplay and say shacks, but hey, they damn sure ain't living in the, in, the, in no high rises and, and no two and three uh, story houses and all of that. Destitute living in the desert is what they got. So you damn right that there is a privilege that exists and it stems from slavery's economic impact. Look, you know what? Hold on. Just in case people think, oh, let's look at Amos. Amos 5. And uh, 
read Amos 5, 10 and 11. It says, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Exactly. The nations hate it. Our own people hate it. When we're sitting out here trying to correct our people and, and get our people to repent and come back and fear the Lord or whatnot, you know, the righteous are always being treated as the lesser class. We're treated as the crazies. We're treated as the ones who are insurrectionists and causing rebellion. And you, we're the troublemakers. We're the hate groups. They hate them that rebuketh in the gate. Well, what, what are we what are we told to, to teach uh, in uh, Proverbs chapter one? The places of concourse and business and all of that. You know, when we go out there and have to shake up the world, they don't like that. They don't want to hear that. So this is what we end up having to deal with. So it says they hate them that rebuke it in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh up brightly. So when we're talking about uh, repentance and people, our people need to change their diet habits. We shouldn't, you know, get back to a biblically clean diet, uh, change your sexual morality standards. You understand what I'm saying? The alphabet community, you need to disassociate yourself from that. Stop being complicit and, you know, letting them get, get away with every damn thing and convincing you that you should go ahead and let your, your, your 10 year old son chop off his ride. And no, no, we're not doing that. But when you do that, expect to be abhorred and hated. You understand? Speaking about the injustices, talking about uh, the necessary need for uh, righteous retribution. Oh, you, you, you they don't want to hear that. Right. But look at this. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. So when we're talking about the building of the White House and in uh, 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 the Washington Monument, you know, that was all designed. The blueprint was made by Benjamin Banneker, a brother. The blueprint. Right. Then you, 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 we, we build up these particular houses and homes, slave plantations, all the way up to, you know, who's building all of these high rise buildings, who's building up all of these homes. Yeah. And the labors of blacks and Hispanics are being built up this, this whole country. And it says we're going to build up these homes and build up these establishments and build up these corporations and we're not going to dwell in them. Yeah, you're out in Palace Verde's building on these, these new additions to these homes. And guess what? You're driving your, your butt right back to the deserts of Palmdale and Lancaster and East L.A. and South Central. Before you stop home, you're, you're picking up a six pack and a can of Raid. To keep the, the damn roaches and, and ants from, you know, in, invading in your home all day and you're drinking because it, you're so tired and burnt out. That's the curse. That's what they're doing with us. That's how they're building up generational wealth. That's how they're building up white privilege through slavery. As much as they want to convince you that it does not matter, that was in the past, don't let them get away with that. I'm going to start it from the top. For as much, therefore, as ye as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of stone, of houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink the wine of them. You see that? That's exactly what they've been able to do. There's another scripture I'm trying to remember. It's not popping off the top of my head. Uh, I think it's Isaiah 10. Let me see. Mm, that's not it. But I remember this word. That's not it. Maybe it is Jeremiah 22. Let me see. It's lucky. I'll be bear with me real quick. Is it Jeremiah? Yeah. Jeremiah 22, 13, right? And it says, woe to him who is building his house by unrighteousness and his upper chambers by injustice. 
on his neighbor he lay a service for not, and his wage he did not give to him. Hello? Does, does that sound familiar? Is that in the KJV? Sounds like. No, it wasn't reading in the KJV. Let me see what version this is. So KJV says, Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by wrong, that uses his neighbor's service without wages, and giveth him not for his work. Yeah, that's right. As many times as we've been building up, our labors aren't being accounted for. Slave labor, neighbor service without wages, not given for our work, building up homes, not being able to dwell in them, building up vineyards and profitable um, landscapes, not being able to collect from them. You know, our people are out here tilling, tilling these uh, uh, strawberry fields and avocado plants and oranges and everything else and selling them on the streets and on the sidewalks and everything else and we ain't getting no money from that from all of the labor that we're doing see but the scriptures say woe unto him that built this house by unrighteousness so let me get back to this article it says the study published in so let me read this one more time this revelation not only sheds light on the long-reaching ties of slavery's economic impact but also raises profound questions about the persistence of privilege and the nature of generational wealth in America. The study published by Plus One examined all 535 members of the 117th Congress, comparing the network net worth of those with slaveholding ancestors to those without. The results are eye-popping. Legislators whose ancestors own 16 or more slaves have an average net worth nearly four million dollars higher than their colleagues without slaveholding ancestors even after accounting for factors like age race and education what is that telling you that clearly slaveholding ancestors are still running this country they're still profiteering off of the aspect I mean, off of the the um the oppressive nature of slavery they're still sitting in congressional seats high office making decisions about your life my life and whatever else goes on within this country and they compared it against those who did not have slave holding ancestors i.e if there are black and hispanic uh members of the the black and hispanic members of congress or maybe the asian ones that that don't have an accounting for slavery here in america not to say they don't have an accounting period but here in america Oh, they're, they're, they're averaging $4 million more. You know, they say the wealth gap between blacks and the so-called white man, it would take over 200 years for us to even the wealth gap between blacks and uh, blacks and whites. Over 200 years. Look it up. Let's continue. This finding comes at a time when discussions about race equality, reparations, and the long-term consequences of slavery are at the forefront of national discourse and provides concrete evidence that the economic advantages gained through slavery continue to reverberate through the American society more than 150 years after emancipation. Did you hear that? So again, as much as they're saying that was in the past, that has nothing to do with what's going on right now. I wasn't there for that. That wasn't my fault. Or, or I can't help it if my ancestors had, had slaves. I didn't choose that. That was, but you're profiteering off of it. You're aiding and abetting the crime. And complicit about it. One more time. This finding comes at a time when discussions about racial equality, reparations, and the long-term consequences of slavery are at the forefront of national discourse. It provides more concrete evidence. They say that, that that can't be proven. Nobody know you can't calculate how much we, we don't stop. That the economic advantages gained through slavery continue to reverberate through American society more than 150 years after emancipation. So take that, as Diddy would say. Take that, take that. Moving on. 
Now, let's look at this. The U.S. seizes a plane of Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro, live now on Fox. Let's look at this interview story coming out of Florida when we learn that the Venezuelan president, the U.S. goes into right. that now We're kind of here caught up on live now. Anthony Salisbury, S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y, special agent charged for Homeland Security Investigations, Miami, Florida. So tell us what happened. Anthony Salisbury, special investigation, Homeland Security, special investigations unit out of Miami, Florida. So Let's listen to Mr. Salisbury's interview and his questions, and we'll, let's see how he handles himself. S-A-L-I-S-B-U-R-Y, special agent charged for Homeland Security Investigations, Miami, Florida. So tell us what happened. What do you see behind you here? So today we seized a Venezuelan-owned aircraft predominantly used by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro in violation of U.S. sanctions and other matters that we're looking at into the aircraft. What does that mean? So today we seized the aircraft in violation of U.S. sanctions uh, against Venezuela by the United States government. Are you able to explain kind of what the sanctions were? So it's, it's the ongoing existing sanctions that uh, uh, OFAC has levied against Venezuela for years now. And explain OFAC. OFAC is the Office of Financial. Uh... Now, if you notice the series of questions, he's got to constantly break down slowly but surely to try to give him a, a, a credible stance on what he's talking about if you notice he's kind of basically repeating himself and the interviewer is trying to grill him a little bit about what happened one more time and other matters that we're looking at into the aircraft what does that mean so today we seized the aircraft and <laughs> didn't he just say that today we see the aircraft of uh, venezuela's uh villa. and he said well, what do you what does that mean uh, well, today we see so, aircraft. Tell us what happened. What do we see behind you here? So today we seized a Venezuelan-owned aircraft, predominantly used by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro, in violation of U.S. sanctions and other matters that we're looking at into the aircraft. What does that mean? In violation of U.S. sanctions and other matters. So he's saying, well, what, what does that mean? With sanctions? What? Explain that. So today we seized the aircraft in violation of U.S. sanctions. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the same person that wrote Kamala Harris's uh, speeches m must be giving him the same thing. You know, the word salad, you know, I grew up in a middle class neighborhood. We must be unburdened by what has been so we can. Uh, can you explain that? Uh, well, I come from a middle class neighborhood. and uh, OK, you get the point. Let's move on. Uh, against Venezuela by the United States government. Are you able to explain kind of what the sanctions were? So it's, it's the ongoing existing sanctions that uh, uh, OFAC has levied against Venezuela for years now. So apparently he cannot detail what are the sanctions. This is ongoing and those same ones has already been up. He's saying, well, if I don't know what the old one, what, what the ongoing ones are, can you explain what that is? No, can't do that. And explain OFAC. OFAC is the Office of Financial uh, Asset Control, so they designate certain host countries. Office of Financial Asset Control. That's important. Asset Control. These who have uh, who are sanctioned, not allowed to have U.S. business, U.S. parts, or U.S. origin parts, stuff like that. So ben Venezuela has been heavily sanctioned by the U.S. government. How did this happen? So, uh, from what I understand, the plane was in the Dominican Republic. Yes. So HSI, working with our partners at the Department of Commerce, Bureau of Industry and Security, and officials um, in the Dominican Republic, have worked to seize this plane in violation of U.S. sanctions and, again, other criminal matters that we're looking at with this aircraft. How did that happen? I mean, did agents go down there and board the plane and take off, or how did... So, yeah, HSI has a global footprint. Um, we have an office in the Dominican Republic. We work side-by-side side all over the world with officials, including officials in the DR. So, yeah, um, HSI will use its global footprint to enforce its criminal priorities all over the world. Did this happen that you got wind that, hey, his plane is coming to the Dominican Republic? That's a place where we can... Yeah, so again, HSI Miami's got long-standing investigations in the Maduro, Maduro regime going back years. We've seized... Um, over two. Sir, start that one again. Just oh. Start that one again. No. Ask me that question again, sir. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Take two. Hey, you want to start that again? You, you missed something. You, you didn't get your lines right, man. Hold on. Can, can we can we run that back? And this is supposed to be a live interview, man. When did they stop and say, "Can, can you run that back again?" 
Can you can you can you get the line right? I'm, I'm sorry. Can we can we start that one again? Hold on. Start that one again. Ask me that question again, sir. Uh, um, over two. Sir, start that one again. Just start that one again. Ask me that question again, sir. Uh, I, forgot, <laughs> I forgot what the question was. Um, uh, did, did we know about it? How did we right, know about oh, that's it? it. I, I, did you know that? that someone was coming in with the plane and that you'd be there to just be able to grab it. So HSI Miami has long-standing investigations into the Maduro regime. Now, the, the, you hear him repeat the line again. These are scripted interviews that's going on, man. This, this cat got his lines down pat. He messed up a little bit. They said, hey, run that one back again. Oh, did you forget you were live? Oh, I guess not. We've disrupted the flow of over $2 billion and indicted over 30 members of the Maduro regime. Now he added in $2 billion and 30 members of the regime. Oh, now he's getting more detailed. Because he messed up the lines earlier. Gets and facilitators. So we are constantly looking at the corrupt practices and illegal activities of the Maduro regime. What is this kind of, what message does this put out there in the world? It says that HSI and its partners have the global reach to impact anyone, including. Sorry, let's try. Ask me that again. What what message does this send out there? <laughs> Y'all get the point. He was hyped up, man. I was about to cut. He thought he had his lines down. He's hyped up. He's on a roll. I, 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 I'm sorry. Can we can we can we run that one back again? Global reach to impact anyone, including. Sorry, let's try. Ask me that again. What what message does this send out there? It says that HSI Miami, HSI on the whole, and its partners have the expertise, the global reach, and the partnerships to impact anyone, including heads of state who think they're untouchable. All right, I'm tired of listening to him read the speech, but y'all see, and there was more that goes on in, into this interview. It's five minutes, forty eight seconds. Not going to play the rest. But you see how the folly goes on, man. You can see the Mockingbird media at its finest right there. You can see the scripts playing out in front of your face. This is all theater. Y'all understand that? It's all theater. And there's a reason why. Because guess what? They can pull a law like this. Civil asset forfeiture. This is what they did. They took that plane. They said that this plane was involved in criminal activity and we're going to hold on to it until further notice. And we can sell this thing, get the money from it. We can use it for our own means, so forth and so on. They're getting ready to hit uh, your man Diddy up. I would not be surprised. They're going to hit his ass up, his assets up. <laughs> no Diddy. Under civil asset forfeiture. They're going to say, oh, these assets that you got, the house, the mansion, the cars. Oh, this down the third. This was a part of your um sex trafficking ring. You got you got money from this. Oh, or the, you you we we're, we're going to assume that the cars that you, you were transporting the the male the the male uh, prostitutes and female prostitutes in these cars. This all came off of proceeds from your your um sexual exploits. I mean, who knows? They're going to start say, seizing his assets and say that they were involved in crime drugs then they find they found drugs on, on him and at the house weapons and ammunition they're gonna they they can say oh yeah you were getting drugs but you were handing them out you were passing them out we don't you, you could have been selling these things you can't say it was off of personal consumption we're gonna need to seize all these assets here civil asset forfeiture remember they said that that was part of his uh the, the this this cat uh uh what was the dude's name whatever his name was i forgot his name um but anyway part of his uh governmental forums was called the asset uh division right so civil asset forfeiture although highly controversial civil asset forfeiture allows laws allow the police to take and keep Large sums of cash or property suspected of either being used to commit crimes or obtained through criminal means. Goods purchased with, quote, dirty money. Oh, the drugs got purchased with dirty money. The 
prostitutes got purchased with dirty money that home that you got that you registering in different names and all of that diddy oh that, that's gonna be a problem um but notice it says it just has to be suspected doesn't mean that it has been proven they all they gotta say is we suspect something's going on here we're gonna need to hold on to this cash the car the boat the plane you dig what i'm saying like that's what they're that's what they're doing with maduro's plane this is the type of laws that they got enacted uh stealing B bottom line hold on Z zachariah five uh this is how they're getting over uh which one do i want zachariah five and i don't want the wild t that's why i'm tripping I want the wild tape. Let me get it out there. Why is it still going there? Okay. So, uh, let's look at uh, Zechariah 5 and verse 3 and 4. It says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on the side according on this side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. So Zacharias reading and receiving this flying roll, uh, and he's getting the judgment regarding thief and theft, him, right? Verse five. I mean, verse four. I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh, the power Yahweh of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. Well, who's the house of the thief? Who's the biggest thief on the planet right now? Who's the colonizer who steals lands, people, ideas, um, inventions, steals recipes? I mean, there ain't nothing he hasn't stolen, man. He's the thief, steals identities. Oh, we didn't want to talk about that. Right, steals culture, claims it for his own, and he's got what's known as civil asset forfeiture. All I gotta say is, hey, where'd you get that from? I don't believe you. I think it's something else. That's mine now. Thank you. But the Lord said he's going to enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name. Oh, and God we trust. Do you? Solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. What God? Are you talking about Satan? Are you talking about Beelzebub? What God are you talking about? By all you talking about uh your money, yourself. Don't they don't they swear it swear you in on the Bible in, in court? Don't they swear in the 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 the, the leaders of the so-called free world, your presidents, falsely by the name of, 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 of God and say you swear. The Lord said, I'm entering into that house. Destruction is on the way. Remember, he said they're going to be cut off, meaning what? Destroyed and destruction is coming into the house of the thief and those that swear falsely by his name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So this is one of the ways they operate in thiefdom. Here's an example. Tim and his friend Blake were traveling to Houston to purchase a used car. Since it was an all-cash deal, they brought $27,000 cash in a shopping bag. As they got closer to the meeting place, a police officer pulled them over for speeding. The officer noticed a stack of 20s protruding from the bag, asked the men what business they had in this county. Not believing their story and suggesting they were making a drug transaction, the officer pressured them into handing over the cash. The officer informed the driver that they were heading to a known illegal drug spot. Law enforcement did not arrest or charge either man, but now they're $27,000 short and not sure if they will ever see their hard-earned money again. Can the police do it? Believe it or not, in some cases, they can. That, in short, is civil asset forfeiture, okay? Where they can snatch up your money, 
make you fight it out and beg, you know, fight it out in, in court years on end, you're going to end up spending more money than you lost trying to battle a state or a county or a police department, trying to get your money back, trying to get your property back, trying to prove that it's legitimate. And before you know it, they're basically live by the rules of my money's longer than yours. You're going to get tired before I do. You drop the case, you say, forget it. Uh, I, I can't afford to keep going on with this. Whatever. I got to take this loss. Matter of fact, um, Netflix just did a, did a, uh, did a movie regarding civil asset forfeiture. Uh, and that, what was the name of that movie? Um, uh, shoot. What was the name of that movie? If it comes to me before we finish, uh, I'll, I'll remind everybody of it. But I can't ah, shoot. I just saw it too a couple of weeks ago. Um, I know Ashar, you're gonna throw <laughs> Ashar, you're gonna throw it in, go, gonna throw it in the chat, throw it in the chat, because I surely can't remember off the top of my head right now. But there's a movie that that does highlight civil asset forfeiture. Uh, you got a brother in it. Dang. I just can't recall it off the top of my head. But nonetheless, if it comes to me, you'll know. But that that was a good, good, uh, good movie. Um, that's what's going on. The House of the Thief, man, coming in here to take over. Last story I want to cover real quick, dealing with uh, marks or ways of payment, right? via your head, forehead, or uh, dealing with a systematic, um, a system that's based around payments that's biometrically linked with yourself in good old Michigan. Look at this, pay eye, paying with your eyes, mid Michigan first in North America to experience pay eye. I think this is a very impressive technology and this is the wave of the future. Let's look at this. Welcome back. Leave your wallet at home. Shoppers can now pay with just their eyes at four mid-Michigan businesses. Today at Barrio Restaurant in East Lansing, a transaction with this technology was completed for the first time ever in North America. News 10's Aaron Bowling shows us how it works. With only a glance, dinner and drinks can be paid for in an instant. Pay eyes hoping to turn cash and card into a payment of the past. Okay. What I was impressed with is the ease of capturing Iris, and number two, the the time it takes, small amount of time it takes to make the payment. PayI opened their first U.S. office in East Lansing on Tuesday, aligning with their launch at local businesses. Their device scans your Iris, which is five times more unique than a fingerprint. Oh, so if they can't get your fingerprint, you got a five times more accurate way to link to yourself your identity. You understand what I'm saying? And they're already getting everybody accustomed to uh, iris scans, retina scans, facial recognition through identities going on right now. Airports, facial recognition. Uh, where else are they doing it at? Uh, other, other methods uh, uh, and, and places to travel, they're doing it. Uh, if you remember that Instagram video I showed of the Moabite woman that said that she had a um, a debit card that was given to her by her her cousin it was either a cousin or her sister but she couldn't access it because the um uh, the card was linked with the face of recognition scanner and she kept trying to scan her face and it wasn't linking up and she couldn't access it it's already in motion they just have to convince everybody that this is, like they said, the wave of the future. It's all about accessibility and easy. We're going to make life easier for you. Just let us in your life. Let us in your body. You understand? We're actually turning that into binary code, and that's being double encrypted and sent across the network. So um, it's making it very safe, very fast, and very easy. 
Once you've set up your profile on their app, you're ready to let your eyes pick up the check. I think this is a very impressive technology and this is the wave of the future. A professor- no, isn't that nice? Who gives a damn what you think? Professor of Computer Science at Michigan State University, Anil Jain was the first customer in North America to use the technology. He says it's very similar to the technology used for Apple Pay or at the airport. So at the payment time, you don't have to take anything out of your pocket. No mobile phone, no credit card. You simply look at the camera on the payment terminal and, and, and you're done. Making the key to the soul the key to your wallet. And he's... Mm, key to your soul, the key to your wallet. You understand? I'm going to touch on that real quick. As we know, the technology is rolling out. Key to your soul, right? And they say even in the... Uh, well, let, let's look at this real quick. Revelation 13, 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. It's the wave of the future. Doesn't matter. If you notice, even the poor, they get no Obama phones. They're getting access to technology. They're being given ways in, right? To receive and mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man may buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, right? These things are going to be connected into us the technology is there. The spiritual side of this, that's the physical side. The spiritual side is compromising the laws, the commandments, the faith of Christ in order to mesh in with this particular system. They're going to put it in the position. We're, they're going to put everybody in a position that you're going to have to make compromises in order to survive. You know, there's been plenty of different clips where they talk about, especially when it came down to the pandemic, they were saying that uh, there was a dude, damn, I forgot his name. Uh, but he was one of like the health secretaries or something out in New York. And he was talking about, uh, we know we're not going to be able to make everybody do it. All we want to do is make everybody uncomfortable. We want to force everybody into feeling like if I want to, you know, if I want to be quote unquote free, to do what I want, if I want to keep my job, if I want to be able to go to the ball game, if I want to be able to go to the um to the bar or to the club or to the to the um uh, to the funeral or what or, or to the hospital to go visit your loved ones, uh get, comply. If you don't, hey, we're just gonna make life difficult for you. And then what comes along with that is further means of breaking down the moral and the civil structure that you know, come along with the Bible and the laws and this, that, and the third. It's going to go and anti-biblical, especially for those of us in the faith of Christ and keeping the commandments. They're going to make us or, or desire to make us compromise in order to go along, to get along. All right. Slancing, Aaron Bowling, News 10. There you have it, right? So... With that being said, we see what's on the table. Uh, Democrats, Republicans, blowing shots at each other. They're going at it right now. We see that there's definite evidences of the links between slavery and the congressional wealth that goes on in this, in this country. We also see them coming up and maintaining their wealth by thievery known as civil asset forfeiture. We're seeing also staged interviews going on with law enforcement and how they're maintaining uh the, this you know this 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 so-called uh uh public perception of trust hey we're here to do the we're the good guys here we're protecting you from crazy maduro and what he's doing i mean come on man and then we also see the technology man i pay going on uh stay woke y'all as they say right I want to give all praise on and glory to the most high white house side man always remember man fear the most high keep the commandments don't shoot your messenger shalom